Alright, we're going to make some meat pie. Now, looking here, you might say, well, where's the meat? Yeah, well, the way my mom always made it, meat pie had a lot more veggies than meat. So, you can see here, we've got two cups of onion. We've got two cups of turnip, which is about one turnip that size. You can use rutabaga, too, if you don't want something quite as zippy. The bigger rutabagas are not quite as zippy. Two cups of dried mushrooms. Um, that's slightly less than two cups because they're dried. Normally I use about two cups of just mushrooms. This is the first time I'm using dried. Two and a half cups of chopped carrots. You can see that uh, these are carrots from my root cellar. They may not look so pretty on the outside, but you just uh, give them a shave with the vegetable peeler and chop them up and they're fine. That's about one and a half liters of chopped up, uh, cubed up potato. <coughs> and we've got some peas that I got at Giant Tiger for 88 cents a can. And they are actually product of Canada. I definitely do not trust stuff coming from, well, uh, I don't trust stuff from China with all of the melamine and other crap that we're discovering is going into the food they're shipping over here. So I always take care that I'm using Canadian produce. And I've got some uh, string beans that I'm going to put in there. You can see these were canned in August of 2004, which is four and a half years ago. That's probably on the edge of their limit, um, the longest that you'd want to keep them. I've still got four jars left from then. You can see they look absolutely fine and I'm sure they're going to taste fine. What I'm going to do is drain the liquid from here into the potatoes as well as from here so as not to waste the liquid and I pre-cooked the potatoes in the microwave. Um, we will get to that just momentarily and I will probably add some of the chicken broth that I made the other day with the nine carcasses of chicken if you've seen that video and that reminds me speaking of I started off talking about where's the meat the meat I will be using today is the chicken that I got from those carcasses when I made the broth I will show that momentarily so there is my turkey. It's 1.2 kilos of cooked turkey that I got off of those carcasses. In a bowl I've pre-measured my herbs. I've got three tablespoons of oregano, a tablespoon of savory, two and a half of thyme, and a teaspoon of rosemary. Uh, we will get to this not at the moment, but I'm just documenting everything. So I've mostly opened the can of peas and I'm just draining the liquid into here we don't want to waste anything and my own home can string beans whoops let's see same treatment pour them in there that doesn't quite get that stuff covered and I want it covered so I'm going to get some of my chicken broth to top it up with. Alright, there's the stuff I made the other day. You can see the video of me making it. And you may think it's kind of strange to boil potatoes in chicken broth. Um, one thing I will point out is that when this liquid, when these potatoes are cooked, I don't throw that liquid away. I use it later on in the cooking of my meat pie. So you'll see how that uh, takes place. And I've used about uh, two-thirds of that jar and I'll probably use the rest of it in finishing off the meat pie too. So the potatoes go into the microwave and I will set for let's see that much time. So I have my deep skillet for this. This is really required a deep skillet or you can use a Dutch oven or casserole I suppose that's good for stove top. Put my burner on four and just add some of my olive oil that I've made. I, I introduced this olive oil in one of my other episodes. Made it uh, about ten years ago now and it's still fantastic. It's herbed. It's got herbs and spices in it. 
I don't know what that is maybe two tablespoons or so really what I should be doing here is actually using some of the um, using some of the chicken fat that I canned up instead of this but I don't know I just canned it up and I don't want to open a jar already uh, that's kind of silly but oh well uh, so just letting that come to the come up to heat and then I will add my onions alright so I'll preheat it in go the onions Good. That oil is really good. The stuff that I made with all of the uh, herbs in it, rosemary and a bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to cook this for two or three minutes and then I'm going to add my chicken in there. Alright, and now, whoa, that's one big hunk of meat. That up. 1.2 kilos. You can see there's some fat in it there. 1.2 kilos of reclaimed chicken. Alright, I get this in there, heating it up and stirring it on up. And we'll see where we go next. Okay, the potatoes are done cooking. I just drained out the liquid into this container that the chicken had been in. And now I'm going to go drain water over the potatoes to stop them from cooking. There they are. And just want to halt the cooking process. They're already done just uh, slightly, I guess you'd consider it al dente if it were a. Uh, if it were if it were pasta, I don't want it to cook too much further because they're going back in the frying pan. So a little bit more water. Cool the meat down. Now just leave them there to drain. Let me try one. Yeah, just tender, just slightly, but you don't want them falling apart. Alright, this is in need of something more in there, so I'm going to put some of my liquid in. Now, the reason why we don't discard the liquid from the potatoes cooking is because there's lots of starch in that liquid. The potatoes are, of course, starchy, and uh, we need something to make our meat pie sort of have a gravy in it. And we may end up ending cornstarch later on in the process if there's not enough starch naturally occurring from the other stuff. We'll see when we get there. But if possible, I'd like to do it without adding cornstarch. So we need yet more of that liquid. I think I might as well dump the whole thing in. There we go. Oh, that's already smelling really good. All right. So that's going to get very soupy very quickly. It's heating up really nicely. The liquid is, was hot, so it's not bringing down the temperature of the whole thing at all. So there we go. And then at this point, we are going to start adding the other vegetables once that comes right back up to the boil there, which it should any second. All right, there she is boiling, and we're going to add the firm veggies first. Add the carrots. Uh, looks like we may have to upgrade this skillet to a Dutch oven before we're done here. Hmm. We'll see, and then add the turnip or the rutabaga if that's what you chose. And carefully, oh, I think we'll have room here. Carefully mix it all in, and you want that to cook a few minutes. Now you're going to get more starch from these guys too, naturally. And you want this to cook probably 10 minutes or so until those veggies are, are loosening up in there, you know, getting kind of firm and no longer crispy. Or sorry, no longer firm and no longer crispy. They're, they're getting kind of soft, rather. 